Hello and welcome to this TDD tutorial. And welcome to the section 2, Test Driven Development, the workflow to bulletproof your code. In previous section we got familiar and comfortable with automated tests. In this section we are going to have first contact with test driven development. To be more exact, in this section we are going to understand TDD with the example, then we are going to compare test driven development to traditional testing, and finally, we are going to examine test-driven development cycle a bit further. So let's start from the first topic of this section, understanding TDD with the example. In this video, we will define what exactly is test-driven development, and we are going to run one practical example of it. What is TDD? TDD is a software development process, which consists of writing unit tests that will initially fail, and then implementing minimum amount of code to pass that test. After that, code can be refactored. It is important to notice that we are always trying to write minimal amount of code. By doing this, we are avoiding over-engineering. In this example, we will implement one part of the solution we did in previous section. Basically, we will demonstrate how one can develop subtract method for natural numbers calculator using TDD. We will do this in three steps. First, we are going to write some tests for this method that will fail, then we will implement minimal amount of code, and finally we are going to refactor our code to follow certain standards and to be a bit nicer. Like in previous section, we will use XUnit unit test framework, so don't forget to install these NuGet packages. XUnit, this package will install a bunch of other packages, XUnit runner console, and finally XUnit Visual Studio runner. Don't forget to install the last one, because tests won't be displayed in this test explorer otherwise. Ok, here is our natural numbers calculator class. It's empty right now. And here is our test class. It is empty also. Notice that we are using XUnit, so we don't need to label the class. Now, we are going to invert the process that we did in our previous section. Let's write our first test for subtract method. We will follow the same procedure as in previous section, meaning that first we will create the object of the natural numbers calculator, then we will call the subtract method, this will cause our build to fail, and then we will store results in a local variable. After that we will check the expected result. So let's do it. We will use fact and label our test method as public void. We will call it subtract method numbers success okay so let's first create the object of the calculator class then let's call subtract method which doesn't exist yet and this will cause our build to fail We'll call it on numbers 4 and 3 like in previous section. And finally, let's use assert to verify the result. Of course, our build fails because we don't have subtract method in our class yet. So let's add it. Let's add subtract method. It will receive two parameters, int a and int b and we will return just some dummy value let's say return zero okay now our build pass and we can see our test in test explorer but when we run this test it will fail because we are just returning zero here we are not doing anything with a and b and in the test itself we pass the numbers four and three so we are expecting result to be one Ok, now let's implement minimal amount of code that will make this test test. Turn A minus B. Right? This should be enough. Let's build our code and run the test. Great! Our test passed. Congratulations, you've just written your first test using TDD workflow. This way, we implemented something that some people call happy path. Basically, one or more tests that pass when everything works as we expected it to work. But let's see if there is a way to blow our happy path, to write tests that will not pass. This is called a sad path. 
it's sort of what will happen if I do this attitude. So let's go back to our tests. Because it's a natural numbers calculator, this function has to return 0 if second number is larger than the first one. So let's write a test for that. We'll label it with fact, make it public void, call it subtract method, let's call it second larger than first, and we'll say it's success. In this case, we will again call this, we'll have this structure, let's copy this so speed things up a bit, but we will call for let's say 5 and we are expecting the result to be 0. Let's build the code. Here it is our test and when we run it we will see that this one fails. The first one passes still which is good that is our happy path and this is our sad path. We're trying to break our happy path. So let's now implement minimal amount of code that satisfies this test method b is larger than a, we will turn 0. Alright, run the test. Great, they all pass. So now let's refactor our code a bit. Let's say I want to write it this. b is a, I will return 0, otherwise I will return a minus b. Let's delete all of this. Hopefully our tests still pass. So let's run them. Great, this is good. Now our tests pass. This process is exceptionally fun to do if you do pair programming. One person tries to write the tests that will break our system and another write the implementation for it. Of course this is a game that you can play it with yourself. Congratulations, you've just implemented your first code using test-driven development.